It is the glorious beginning of Christmas, those 12 days of celebration of the birth of Christ, the joyous time where we may draw near and remember the gifts that were given so long ago that we continue to receive if we are aligning our hearts and minds with God. As we are thinking of those glorious events of so long ago of a virgin birth and shepherds coming in and greeting, let us hear also this reading from Psalm. Here be reading the 84th Psalm, all 12 <coughs> verses. Pray that our hearts and minds are open to hear what Scripture is saying to us, the church. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul long, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways of Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. The Lord of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, our God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us hear also this reading from 1 Thessalonians. He'll be reading in the first chapter, verses 4, going down through verse 10. Pray that our hearts and minds are open to hear what Scripture is saying to us, the church. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we have had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he <clears throat> raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May all who have heard these words trust that they come from our good, gracious, and loving, almighty, powerful, heavenly Father, Son, and Spirit, that they are to inspire us to encourage us and to remind us daily that we have God with us, Emmanuel. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Holy, holy, holy Lord, we pray that our hearts and minds will be open, that we will hear what the message is that you have for us, that we will be filled up to overflowing with love, hope, joy, and peace, and that we will go out and shine Christ's light for all to see. We thank you, God, and we praise you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
I am so thankful that you all chose to spend your Christmas early morning here with us. It is a rare thing that Christmas lines up on a Sunday. So often there are skips in the years because of, you know, um, leap year. I never can remember the things in my mind. It's just everywhere else. It's probably how yours is. You may be thinking about the brunch you're about to go have once we leave here. You may be thinking about, ooh, I wonder what that big present under the tree is. We have so many things on our minds, don't we? So many things we're pondering and thinking about. But have we done as Mary did and pondered these things in our heart? Have we been thinking about what God is doing? Have we been concentrating on what Christmas is about? Not the presents, not the wonderful times with family and beloved friends, but that it's about our gracious and loving God choosing to come and be with us. It seems this year, and it may have been a discussion before, that the song that I've always loved, Mary Did You Know, is getting ridiculed. That people are saying, of course she knew. The angel came and told her. I think the reality of that, though, is much like what I think us Presbyterians need to do. We often have a prayer of confession, but do we really dwell on how God's blood washes us and makes us whole? Do we really forgive those who have sinned against us, or are we holding that record of wrongs? For me, I rejoice in hearing the song, Mary, Did You Know?, but I also think, Roy, do you know? You preach about a Savior coming, but did you actually apply what God is saying to your life? We can't just have it as something we say. We need to be living it out. We need to be moving into that light. The whole call of Advent is that the people who walked in darkness saw a great light. Well, the call is not just to see the light, but to move to it. You know, if we're continuing to grope around in the darkness, we're not going to do any better. You may have heard this joke that this man was walking around under this street like it was looking for nobody knew what. And this person stopped and asked him, well, what have you lost? Well, I dropped my keys. Well, and he joined and helped him look for a while. He said, is this where you dropped your keys? No, I dropped them over there, but it's dark and I can't see anything over there. The whole reality is it's important to be in the light, but unless you look for where you actually lost something, you're not going to get anywhere. If we don't actually apply that to what is broken, apply our great need to our God. As the psalmist was writing here in the 84th chapter, are we trying to be a doorkeeper in the tents of our God, or are we wanting to live in the tents of the wicked? We need to recognize what we're doing. We need to recognize we're not going to get anything from Christmas or any religious activity if we're not seeking to be in God's tents, <coughs> seeking to live as God calls us to. Christ has given us love and hope and joy and peace. Christ is with us, but are we abiding with God? Are we looking for how he can redeem each of those moments? And again, it's all different for each of us. Diane and I went to a um, Christmas Eve service last night, and the pastor was so bold as to say, you all probably thought that was the most boring Christmas reading you've ever heard. He was trying to be funny and yet challenge us because he read from Matthew the whole genealogy of Christ, the first 14 verses of Matthew. Some people might have been thinking it was boring. I was going through, okay, which of these people that he's reading, do I remember how they are brought out in the history of Jerusalem in that faithful action of God with those people? He read my favorite name of the Old Testament, name Zerubbabel. It just sounds like a big and exciting name. Of course, he was the one who rebuilt the wall when the children went back. The pastor was pointing out, of course, the power of that list of names was it was founding what happened to Christ in the reality of our world. That he wasn't a make-believe anything or that it wasn't some mystical magic situation. It was truly founded in the history of our lives and that those people that were listed were just as broken and messed up as we are. 
Maybe they didn't have the problem of forgetting where they left their cell phone or they had their glasses on the top of their head wondering where they were. They didn't, may not have had the same stumblings we did, but they're just as confused and broken and as much of a hot mess as each of us is. We all look good here today. You all look fabulous. But we also know when we're looking in the mirror who we are, don't we? We know all those records of wrongs that we hold against people, sometimes even against ourselves. How we have trouble trusting and hoping. That's why our baptismal vows aren't anything about getting it right or getting it perfect. It's about turning back to our Savior. Of course, at Christmas, we're celebrating that the Savior is here with us. We don't have to get up and pack everything and go anywhere to find God. God found us. Hallelujah. So we need to move into the light. We need to move into living with our God, not just at Christmas, but all the year through, living as he calls us to live, loving as he calls us to love, being at peace and having great hope. How those words from Thessalonians strike you? For we know that we are beloved and chosen of God. He has chosen you. He's chosen me. Do you live your life that way, that God has chosen you? If you're like me, you're all too often thinking, oh, why, Lord? Why did you make me this way? Why did you put me in this Situation And the reality is God has done that so we can be a blessing in that situation. That we have all our weaknesses and brokennesses that God may give us an opportunity to be made different and it will be obvious, oh, God did something there. You may be thinking that's not fair, or that's not very helpful, but again, we need to be mindful that we're here not for our purposes but for God. To make God well known to display his love, his hope, his joy, and his peace. That is part of moving to the light is to swallow that pill and to humbly recognize it's not about me. It's not what I might dream of or hope for. It's about what God put me here to do, to spread the word of his love. To do as that hymn that I like so much, go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere, that Jesus Christ is born. That's why we're here, to be proclaimers of God's love and strength, to recognize he is with us. And if you're thinking, does that mean I need to become be a preacher? No, that means in every part of your life to give God the glory, to be thankful. It's some of the things we do all the time, at least I hope we do, that when we're sitting down to a meal, we're thankful that God has provided for us, that he has given us the wealth that we have, the wisdom we have, that we can be ready in season and out of season because he is with us. I know every time I've read that Thessalonians passage, it's like, I wonder, what do people say about me? I'm sure they're not saying I'm the best preacher they've ever heard, and they're probably not talking about how funny all my sermons are and how they get to every part of their life, but I'm hoping maybe a little. Probably the best thing I could hope for is they're saying, yeah, despite all the things that Roy is, he does proclaim God's grace, hope, love, joy, peace. He tries to be loving and kind. I'm sure when the Thessalonians were hearing this, they're like, does Paul really know us? Has he seen us? Has he understood? We need to recognize in moving to the light that, yes, God knows, that Paul knew that we are a hot mess and God came to save us anyway. And that Christ came not in a high and fantastic way in a kingdom, but he came in a manger so that it would be clear that all could approach. That the first to come were the shepherds. Again, if you were a shepherd, you had the worst job apparently that you could have in that day and time. But the meek and the lowly are welcome. <clears throat> you don't have to be high and mighty to approach God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And again, that he left heaven to be with us. <clears throat> That's truly what we can celebrate, that we, the people walking in darkness, 
have seen a great light, that it is dwelling among us. That we don't have to go far to be a doorkeeper at God's tent because he has made his tent here. He's made it so we can serve with him and through him and for him in every part of our life. That are lying down and are rising up, we can give God thanks and praise. We can rejoice that we are in his tents, that he is with us. Let us turn to the light, move into the light and rejoice that we can be that blessing that we can shine out in all the darkness that may be around us for all the darkness that may come upon us and trust that it will not overcome us. Let us give God thanks and praise. Let us rejoice in his love and care. Let us carry his light to the world this day and forevermore. To God be the glory. Amen. Beloved family of God, I invite you to stand if you are able and join in our statement of faith, the 100th Psalm. <coughs> Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his, his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless, Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Thanks be to God. Let us remain standing and sing our ascending hymn, number 56. 